Hello and thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to spend with me. Welcome to another video. Welcome to another discussion. Today I want to talk to the gentlemen and ladies chime in too because I know you you are going to have some input and I will be uploading the male version of this video. So I haven't forgotten. I haven't forgotten you. You're not left out, but I want to speak to the men first and discuss the female narcissist when it comes to her solo time, when it comes to her pleasing herself. One thing about these raggedy dusty behinds, they're all the same really. They are just raggedy and dusty and I can't say that enough. I like using that term so that we can keep things in perspective because sometimes that cognitive dissonance sets in and we ask ourselves, was it really as bad as I think it was? Yes, it was. It really was as bad as you think it is because you were with the raggedy dusty joker. And that's just the facts. This female narcissist doesn't care about you. You know, one thing about narcissists is that they, they have a harem. It's the love cult where they keep a collection of all the souls that they have gathered. All their prior partners, all their woulda, coulda, should haves, even the ones that got away. They try to find a way to keep them within that love harem. And, you know, they have no problem opening their mouths to let you know about their special friends. They talk about who they used to date, who they almost date, and, you know, they twist the truth so much, you know, so you don't really get the full story, but you get parts of the truth when they are mentioning these encounters that they've had. They have a plethora of past sexual partners. They are, you know, for the most part, unless they are so cerebral narcissists, they have had, they've bodied many people. In other words, they have had sex with a, with a ridiculous amount of people. Narcissists are for the most part, pathological cheaters. The female narcissist is no different. And, you know, caution to you gentlemen that this lady is, she's just ruthless in everything that she does. If you are a gentleman who is entertaining such a, such a creature, I advise you to get away from her. I advise you to wrap it up. I advise you to be very careful when you are, when you're about to be intimate with her, because these beasts have been known to poke holes into, you know, into the protection and trap you with babies. They've been known to go into trash cans and use these, um, these used up, you know, umbrellas, if you will, to turkey based herself so that she can conceive your child and you're wondering, well, what happened? And she comes up with all types of stories about what happened. But, you know, this is just a little segue into what we're, what I want to discuss with you today, because the female narcissist, when it comes to these, when it comes to solo pleasure, she loves to masturbate. She loves to entertain herself but does not include you into the process. Now, one thing about narcissists, when it comes to, um, you know, when it comes to sex in general, they, they tend to feel like, you know, they're excellent performers. They always are concerned about what was your experience with them like. So they want you to rank them with prior partners. They want to know how their body compares. They want to know, well, how do they kiss in comparison to somebody you are with, as well as how are they truly when, you know, when it comes down to doing the do, they want to know. And be careful with this one because remember they're they've got really soft they've got a really soft spot because their their ego is bruised easily and even though they are bold enough to ask this question they're not bold enough to receive the truth they're not strong enough to receive the truth and the truth of the matter is really for the most part you lie to them. You don't tell them the truth. You tell them that she's this and she's great and she's that even when she's just mediocre. Very loud, wants to be star of the show and just feel like, you know, she's the greatest thing that's ever happened to you and even trick you into believing that she is never ever going to be the greatest thing that ever happened to you. For those of you who are still struggling with overcoming from this type of relationship, gentlemen, my heart goes out to you because I understand the deception as well as the games that she has played on your mind, but you did not deserve this woman. You deserved somebody so much better. She's just a raggedy, dusty joker. So 
when they think in their minds, because narcissists weaponize everything, including sex. And so when they start to devalue you, sex is one of those things that they will use for the most part to devalue with to devalue you with. <laughs> so they, you, you find that they get into the pattern of withholding it from you. But while they're withholding it from you, does not mean that she's not getting it. She's getting it somewhere. Remember, we're talking about a raggedy, dusty, pathological cheater. She's getting it somewhere. But even while she's getting it somewhere, she'll introduce adult movies and watch, you know, Things that might make you uncomfortable simply because she may be following a particular theme within that movie, within that show. But not only that, she begins to pleasure herself and act like she's really enjoying it because she knows you're uncomfortable. You know, when it comes to porn and narcissists, they do tend to enjoy this a lot because it's really like it's just an, it's a commodity. And so is supply. It's just an exchange. There is no intimate connection that is required when it comes to porn is all about performance and we know that these narcs are in performance mode when they are around people whenever they're trying to get the spotlight they're performing so even in these acts of her now beginning to pleasure herself in front of you to to annoy you because she's you know she you may think that this is an invitation to join her or this is you know how she wants to role play or this could be foreplay no it's not she doesn't want you to be part of that she wants to you know weaponize the moment she wants to leave um bad memories or bad taste in your mouth when it comes to remembering certain acts when it comes to sex so that when you move on in the future you'll remember how you felt when you possibly may witness or experience certain things she's trying to ruin future experiences so one thing that they'll do is you know with the movies again they'll choose things that make you uncomfortable they'll choose themes that don't speak to you choose themes that are just out of the world you know just something that is very degrading but then she begins to praise the man on the scenes like talking about how big their member is and how he moves and then beginning to begins to compare your performance all while she's enjoying herself and she's just putting on a show so i really hope that you don't personalize these things because they are coming from look at the screen that's who they're coming from and so now also remember that you know sometimes what she will do is like you'll be asleep and she'll bring out her toys and you know listen adult people do what they want to do and i'm not here to judge anybody you do what you want to do if that's how you roll but she will bring her toys into the bed oversized while she devalues how you know how he's built somebody who loves you somebody who is willing to work through a relationship with you somebody who is really invested in you does not care about those things because at the end of the day it's what's on the inside of you that's going to matter at the end of the day some of these things are so superficial yes sex is a very important part of a relationship but so is communication and you know we can talk about how to make this work for us but she will attack any weak spots that you may have introduced her to or talked to her about remember they want to know everything about you in the beginning they in, they listen and, and get you to talk they want you to talk, talk, talk so that they know how to hit below the belt later on. So she's been listening. And now, you know, she uses these moments or those moments to weaponize her attack. So it's extra personal to you. But now she's in the bed and, you know, remember how she told you about the people in her in her harem, in the narcissistic harem, her love cult. Now she begins to call on their names while you're there. You think she thinks you're sleeping because you're just not moving because you're like, what what is going on? But she's calling, whispering other people's names. And even sometimes when you guys are just doing it together, she may call somebody else's name and say, oops, like it's a mistake. And no, it's not a mistake. Narcissists do these things to get on your nerves, to hurt your feelings, to cause you to question yourself and get you to wonder, what is she doing behind my back? To then accuse you of cheating or being insecure. No, you're not insecure. This is deliberate. 
But when it comes to the solo pleasure, it really is as a way to devalue you. She uses it as a means to punish you. And the crazy thing about it is sometimes she's not even punishing you, but you are who happens to be there at the time. She could have received a narcissistic injury from another source of supply, but she cannot retaliate to that source. Maybe they've got no contact with her, what she deserves. But now who does she lash out on? She comes to you and she behaves in this manner. So you gotta understand that you can't try to explain why this creature does what she does. She does it because she can. She does it because she's of a depraved mind. She does it because she just has no sense. It has nothing to do with you. And I know these moments are hurtful because the men do some crazy stuff too. So don't internalize it. It is all to make you feel like you did something wrong. You're not good enough. It's, it's really to weaponize future relationships too. And to leave, you know, to sear those memories, those moments in your mind. But you are so much more than that. And I just wanted to come on here and just speak to you, gentlemen. You know, it's not that we don't hear you. It's not that we don't see you. We know. And, you know, sometimes I see the comments where you say, but like, listen, we're men and we go through these things, too. We know. But when we get behind these mics and behind, you know, and we come to talk about these experiences, because at least for myself as a woman, I'm just speaking from my perspective. But you can always flip the script and understand that these women do the same thing. We get it. And I continue to wish you the best as you journey beyond narcissistic abuse. I continue to uphold you brothers in my prayers so that you do heal and that you encounter a love that you truly deserve. That creature on the seat on the screen right there, you were never supposed to be with her. These moments of intimacy that she ruins for you, she's a fool. She's a joker. She lost what she, you know, what could have been something so good. But again, you don't belong with somebody who has a depraved mind. So I just wanted to come on here, share this message with you, and hopefully it encourages you and inspires you. I hope that you continue to be good to yourself, and I hope that you're having an amazing day. God bless you all.